Francisco. What a win at Levi's Stadium in the NFC Divisional Round as the 49ers for the second consecutive year take down the Dallas Cowboys in the NFL playoffs. Final score, 19 to 12. And last year in the wild card round at AT&T Stadium, 41 and a half million people had watched that game in which was a roller coaster. It was an epic battle which came down to the final seconds, much like this matchup in the divisional round between two of the most iconic brands in all of football. And in similar fashion in 2023 as compared to 2022, it was yet another great matchup, a defensive slugfest, and the result remains the same. San Francisco with the victory. Their second consecutive NFC Championship game. They will travel to Philadelphia next week for the right to make it to the Super Bowl with a win. And it's the second consecutive win over the Cowboys here in the playoffs. Third NFC title game in the span of four years for the Niners. Everybody out there tried to tell me that Kyle Shanahan wasn't a good head coach. He has this team clicking. He has this team humming. And with the rookie quarterback who once again showed a lot of poise in this game, San Francisco comes through with the dub. We're live on YouTube. We're live on Colin. But because it's another San Francisco victory, if you're pumped up about this win, I want you to show me those dubs in the comment section right now because this Niners team has legit of an opportunity as ever to once again be on the quest for six and win a Super Bowl championship. I'm going to take your calls and also share a lot of my news and notes from this football game, but first... Make sure you subscribe to the show. Our watch party was historic. We set records with Super Chats. We set records with the amount of views. And if you haven't come across our channel yet and you're watching us for the first time, we give you daily coverage, news, rumors, analysis, live shows, and watch parties on the Niners. So make sure you lock us in and hit that subscribe button right now. So when you think about this game from all types of different levels, this was a rock fight. This was a defensive slugfest. This was a game that was physical. And to the Cowboys' credit, they matched the Niners' level of physicality. But the 49ers' offense, able to be resilient and come through as the game wore on to score some points there, put some points on the board to make this a seven-point game. I will say, for the second consecutive playoff game, this 49ers' offense was certainly shaky. They couldn't find a rhythm. This Dallas defense matched that level of physicality. As I said, they stacked the box. They were good against the run. They were good against the pass. The 49ers had moved the ball into Dallas territory a couple of times, but couldn't, couldn't, couldn't get past that necessary threshold. And this is a Cowboys team that we talked about all throughout the week does have a very good defense. And I thought that their defensive line, was able to control the line of scrimmage, and the offensive line really struggled. Brock Purdy didn't have a lot of time to throw. Now, on the day, 19-29, 214 yards, but in the early going, he didn't really have a lot of time in the pocket to throw the ball downfield, and he looked to be a little bit flustered because the Cowboys were generating a great pass rush. And throughout the game, this is why I love Purdy, he showed that level of maturity, he showed that level of leadership, and he was able to make some really clutch throws down the stretch to lift the Niners to a victory. I said this at the time during our watch party, but the blocked extra point for the San Francisco special teams unit was massive in this game. I mean, if it's 19-13, it changes how things are. And if it's 16-13, the Cowboys are then a field goal away from tying that football game up. But because the Niners special teams unit came through with that blocked PAT on Brett Maher, who's had a disastrous last couple of weeks, this game could have changed. And that's why it's so cliche to say, you got to win in all three phases, all, fa all three phases, excuse me, offense, defense, special teams. The Niners won in all three phases. They did have the Ray Ray McLeod fumble, but on the other side of that, they had the block PAT, and that's why it's so critical to get that special teams unit down. Not a lot of time for Brock Purdy early in this game. As I said, the 49ers offensive line, a little bit concerning. And going up against an Eagles team that had a league-high 70 sacks, 
and the NFC Championship game. That's going to be a monumental element of this NFC title game to move on to the Super Bowl, which is being played in Glendale, Arizona in a couple of weeks. So when you pivot and look at this matchup between San Francisco and Philadelphia, the line of scrimmage is really going to determine a lot. Philadelphia is a great offensive line. The Niners have a great defensive line. The Eagles have a great defensive line. And the 49ers offensive line is susceptible. And that was shown today because the Cowboys really overwhelmed them along that defensive front. The Niners defensive line, though, let's talk about that, generated a pass rush throughout this game. And it led to Dak Prescott being uncomfortable. Talked about it all throughout the week in the lead up to this game. Dak Prescott, in 12 games in the regular season, had thrown a league-high 15 interceptions. What did he do tonight? Threw an interception. Two of them. One to Dion Bedore Lenore, the other to Fred Warner. And that's what happens when your pass rush is able to get home. And that's how the last two Super Bowl winners have been determined. Rams got a pass rush last year on Joe Burrow. They won the Super Bowl. year before that, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers were all over Patrick Mahomes, and that's why I've continued to say that this Niners team has the necessary components to it to win a championship. They have the offensive play caller in Kyle Shanahan. They have a great defensive coordinator in D'Amico Ryan, so they're very well coached. They have weapons all across the field. If Brock Purdy doesn't mess it up, this 49ers offense can move. But most importantly, this Niners defensive line, if they control the line of scrimmage and they generate that pass rush, it changes things. Now, going up against Jalen Hurts, it's going to be a little bit different as compared to Dak Prescott because Hertz is a little bit more mobile moving around the pocket and picking up yards after the pocket breaks down with his legs. Another big key matchup in this NFC Championship game against Philadelphia. Dak Prescott, we talked about it all week, the two picks. You generate pressure. He's prone to turn their football over. That's exactly what he did. The Ray Ray McLeod fumble led to three points for Dallas. Special teams unit in terms of the fumble and some of the coverage for San Francisco has to be a little bit better in the NFC Championship game. At that point when the Cowboys had capitalized and scored three points off that McLeod fumble, you're thinking, is this the Kyle Williams fumble against the Giants all over again? Didn't end up being the case. McLeod did redeem himself because the following kickoff, he brought it just past midfield, but the 49ers could take advantage of that point. The injury to Tony Pollard certainly was monumental in this football game as well. The 49ers secondary going up against A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, and Dallas Goddard is going to come into question all throughout this week because I do have concerns about this Niners secondary if San Francisco can't generate that pass rush. But also want to talk about George Kittle here as we're just running through all of my news and notes, and then we'll start taking your calls here on call in. George Kittle, so clutch. The bobbling catch to really turn the field at that juncture of the game was massive. And even when the pressure cooker is on, even when the pressure is paramount, George Kittle looks at the sky cam and he's like, ah! Like that type of energy is really important for the Niners to keep things light to a certain degree. I do want to talk about the overall stats of this football game. Then we'll get to our sponsor and start taking your calls as San Francisco is advancing to the NFC Championship game. Brock Purdy, for the first time in seven starts, did not throw for multiple touchdowns. He did not throw for a touchdown at all, but he is now 7-0 in his career as a starter. The 49ers running the football. I had said this during the watch party, and I tweeted it out. Give me a follow at Chase underscore senior. That last drive to go from 16-12 to to 19-12 to could have been a career-defining drive for Kyle Shanahan, especially if he scored a touchdown. It was career-defining because you milked the clock you made the Cowboys panic a little bit, use all of their timeouts, and you ran the football effectively when you needed to. For the Niners, 32 carries, 113 yards, and then on the receiving end, five catches for Kittle for 95, four for 45 for Debo, two for 26 for Jawan Jennings, Ayuk two for 26, but the big one, that 17-yarder from Purdy to move the chains there, and Christian McCaffrey continues to be the most impactful in-season trade in the history of the NFL. 35 yards on the ground, 22 through the air, playing slot receiver, just fantastic. And for this Niners defense, they're able to only get one sack on the night. And now Nick Bosa in his last four does not have a sack, but his impact 
through the air and on the ground was certainly felt. He finished with one tackle for loss and one quarterback hit. Needs to be better against Jalen Hurts. And disciplined pass rush lanes for San Francisco going to be paramount in this game as well. If you want to interact with me, let me know what you think about this game against Dallas as well as the NFC Championship game. I'm on Twitter at Chase underscore senior. But before we start taking your calls here on Colin, today's postgame show is presented by Geology. 16-time award-winning skin, hair, and body care company recognized in Men's Health, GQ, and Esquire. Geology creates simple and effective skin care and hair care routines customized just for the Niner gang with ingredients that are proven to work. And right now, limited time only, they're hooking you up with an absolutely insane offer. Use our code chatsport70 at chatsports.com slash geology or use the QR code we just showed you and they will give you that exclusive 70% off deal. Skincare shouldn't feel like a gamble. Geology is the best in the skincare game. They put an end to dark or puffy under eyes, which is something that I certainly need. You've let it be known in the comment section. Thank you for ripping me and my looks. Just kidding. Helps you fight acne, reduce oiliness, prevents wrinkles, and gives you smoother, hydrated skin. I've been using their face wash in the mornings, dark and puffy. Uh, dark and puffy under eye cream and the retinal night cream before going to bed my skin looking and feeling great and in the shower their geology body wash smells great free of harsh ingredients which I'm really all about so head to chatsports.com slash geology scan the QR code on the screen to save 70% off and with that we're going to start taking their calls live on the San Francisco 49ers report let's begin with Mark Valencia he was down in Kyle Shanahan throughout this game, but did Shanahan prove you wrong? And Mark, what are your thoughts about this dub? Chase, do you smell what the bro cooking? Let's go! Cowboys! Let's go! <laughs> ah! San Francisco! Let's go, Mark! Had to go hard on the reverse psychology in the chat today, bro. I don't like doing it, but I had to yet again. Okay, look, man, you know me well enough for these calls that I'm going to keep it real, right? So I'm going to give you some hot takes, and, you know, I'd like to get your, your take on them of after, course, right? Of course, of course. First, bro, I heard what you said right now. Let's be real, man. Kyle got shut down, okay? Bosa disappeared. MIA. No real pass rush, dude, which is a huge concern going into Philly. There are some major concerns here, dude. The Eagles will be rushing the crap out of Brock, and I think he, he splits out to his left, if I'm correct, where he's uncomfortable. They're going to be doing that, man, all day. He, Kyle needs to adjust, dude. Where are the adjustments? I did not see them. He was just calling plays up the middle. He needs to game plan for what the Eagles, they're surely going to bring it, dude. All right? They're going to stop the run. Kyle needs to, I guess, call his pops, put Mike on the, on the line, pick his brain going forward, dude. Because I don't know, man, it's the big lights or what, dude, but that guy just freezes up, dude. So I hear what you're saying, man. We won, all right, but back to this game, dude, and I don't think anyone could deny this, all right? And I challenge anyone in this these next calls to to uh, contradict me, and, and if, I'm more than happy if I'm, if I'm wrong. But this was more about Dallas losing it than the Niners winning it. We got lucky with Pollard out, which changes the game plan. Um, the real Dak showed up, who is garbage, right? And dude, you know, look, man, D'Amico, look, he look, it looks like he's going to have to manufacture some pressure. Bosa's MIA, dude. So you need to send Warner behind Bosa on some blitzes or Hufunga. But I would say Warner. Warner, that guy has just got a knack, man. I've seen him in on blitzes, dude. And they got to send that. He's a dog. All right. That being said, bro, I will enjoy this win. But I hope Kyle gets his head out of his ass and has some contingency plans for, the, for these Eagles, man. Because I'm telling you, bro, those claws are going to be coming out to gouge his eyes, dude. So let's go, San Francisco. And ah! <laughs> <laughs> Mark Valencia, we love the Valencia family here on the Niners Report. And for the 49ers offense, right, the Eagles were middle of the pack in their rushing defense. That's how San Francisco can exploit Philadelphia on the defensive end. For Kyle Shanahan, though, like, can we also give credit to this Cowboys defense, which did come to play? They matched the level of physicality that they knew that the Niners were going to bring to the table because San Francisco often loves going bully ball. This is a very good Cowboys defense. 
and Kyle Shanahan did have some fits. But look, when they needed to get three and waste the clock, they did. What I thought was interesting is that San Francisco didn't really try to spread it out a lot. They kind of played into the Cowboys stacking the box a little bit and still tried to run the football and didn't get out to the perimeter at all. I thought that there were some second half adjustments, late game adjustments to try to do that, to try to throw the football and run the football outside like that Elijah Mitchell run in which he should have slid down. So look, Kyle Shanahan gets a massive playoff win. This is a very good Cowboys team that won 12 games in the regular season and they can easily like compete for a Super Bowl, but San Francisco took care of business at home. I expected this to be a rock fight. I expected the 49ers to score more points, but look, they won 12 games in a row. And prior to today, they had averaged more than 30 points per game offensively. They were due for an offensive clunker. While I like the identity of what the Niners did today, their defense rose up to the occasion. Two interceptions at Dak Prescott, they forced multiple field goals, and they bent, but they did not break. And for D'Amico Ryans, that's a great showing as he tries to become a head coach. Let's go next to David. David Corona, what are your thoughts on this dub? What's up with those choke artists, Cowboys? They always choke, brother. They always choke. Yeah, every year when they play us. But, hey, I got I got a couple questions. Let's go. One question. We can't be playing like that next week nope. when we play the Eagles. No. Got to be a little bit more tidy. Yes, exactly. We need more touchdowns instead of field goals. And number two, our defense needs to step up and stop missing and missed tackles and this and this and that. And, like, we just have to play our game like we play like Se or play the Seahawks and and don't don't look down. Just just bring up and, and we have to score more touchdowns to win more games, to win next week. Yeah. Because if we go with all field goals, field goals, field goals, I don't think we're going to win with no, all yeah. field goals. David Crony, you make a really good point, and I really do appreciate the call here on our postgame show. The Eagles have a potent offense, and they've been so good in the red zone. They've also been so good on some of the money downs, third downs and fourth downs, and they've done a great job of really converting on some of those opportunities to put seven points on the board, but also they're down to go into a game knowing it's going to be a shootout because they have a bunch of weapons on the offensive side of the ball. A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, Dallas Goddard, Miles Sanders, Boston Scott, Kenny Gainwell just ran for more than 100 yards. They have a fantastic offensive line. In terms of a football matchup, a football matchup, Niners-Cowboys is the best-case scenario for the NFC Championship game. And this is why you subscribe to the show. I have been saying for two straight months this is going to be the NFC title game because these are two of the best teams. So if you don't trust my football analysis, I understand that I'm wrong sometimes. I'm right a lot. We predicted this months ago. Bang, bang, Niner gang, subscribe today. Let's go next to Electra Babe. Electra Babe always brings the heat. What's up, Electra Babe? Welcome on to our postgame show. Hey, Chase. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Oh, how can it not I... be wonderful after this? <laughs> well, I have a few things to okay, say. Let's go. I found it was more or less like an interception game. And Cowboys were always, at least, like, well, always throwing interceptions and getting caught. And we were never one for having, catching interceptions. So it was kind of almost a given game. But we weren't gaining. It was finally a chance that defense was challenging us. Mm -hmm. They were playing good plays and a lot of a running game. I didn't see Purdy's arm this time. I didn't see him throwing as much, getting good throws. It's all running. I don't know if he saw or what was going on. Maybe the, like you said, the lights at one point. Maybe it's a little bit scary. <laughs> but... There's some things we need to realign because the Eagles are going to be a challenge. Like, they looked good yesterday. Yeah. Watching the game, and I was like, this is going to be something. We need to realign. Kyle Shannon to get everybody back together. Get in there with Bosa, even Bosa. Mark was saying, there's something not clicking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it usually does today. So we need to realign. Maybe it was a fear. Maybe it's playing the Cowboys. It's always a, t a tight game. It's always, we want to beat them because we always do. So maybe they were playing a little safer tonight yeah. than yeah. they usually do. Yeah, but so we should... Let me react to that, Electra Babe. I do appreciate the call. And look, like this is really what it comes down to is the identity of every single game is not going to be the same. So we're kind of blinded and honestly spoiled to the point where San Francisco prior to this game and their winning streak had averaged more than 30 points per game.
going in, I picked the Niners to win 30-26 to because I thought that their potent offense was going to go blow for blow with the Cowboys' well-rounded offense, and this was going to be a shootout. But what the identity of this game ended up being was a physical game that was decided at the line of scrimmage between two defenses that really came to play. I mean, all year we've been talking about the Eagles, Niners, and Cowboys as having the best defenses in the NFL. And this ended up being a defensive identity type of game. So when the game is flowing like that, and the game slows down, and Dallas is stacking the box, and they're showing pressure, San Francisco's going to counter to a certain degree. I do believe that I, and I agree with you, Electra Babe, that Brock Purdy should have thrown the football a little bit more. You get him some plays as he rolls right, rolls left, out in space, he can throw the ball downfield. But also, Kyle Shanahan was also seeing that the Cowboys' defensive line was manhandling at moments the Niners' offensive line. And because of that, he didn't have a lot of faith and trust that da uh, that that Brock Purdy against this Dallas pass rush was going to have a lot of time to drop back and throw. And for a rookie quarterback who isn't all that experienced at the NFL level, Kyle Shanahan has to think about this, right? Look, if we can't pass protect, then we have to try to run the football. Because if we try to throw as Purdy's getting pressured, that's when some of those inopportune and back-breaking turnovers can happen. You saw what happened with Dak Prescott. You got that pass rush. He turned it over two times. For Brock Purdy, he played a clean brand of football. So Kyle Shannon got a little bit conservative, but you can also see why he got a little bit conservative. Let's go next to the Evan, the GM, the Evan, the GM. What's up, Evan? How you doing tonight? Hey, um, honestly... What happened to those cowgirls? They always say it's their year, but this year they're heading to the couch. Yes, and they're headed to the golf course, Evan. <laughs> yeah, honestly, I watched the entire game. The night, um, they got beat on the short pass, and then when they did the long passes, it was broken up. Yep. So I think against the Eagles. I think that's what they should do is cover the short passes, make them beat in the long throws to and um and like the Niners really good like feeding George Kittle. Like he's their big threat. They should feed him more and then like three or four times. Yeah, I agree. George Kittle is a massive component of this Niners passing game and Brock Purdy was able to link up with him on a couple of big plays. I thought what Evan said about forcing the Eagles to throw the football downfield. Hertz made a couple of good throws on Saturday night against the Giants where he had deep ball accuracy. And his deep ball accuracy does continue to be very underrated. But as the game wore on, maybe the soreness set in for Jalen Hurts, he was throwing a lot of balls right and left, right along the line of scrimmage. So if you take those away and you tackle well in space to force Hurts to beat you downfield, to show that he's healthy, to show that the arm is okay, that could be a formula for success. For San Francisco, our guy, or, or our guy, excuse me, Draco Pippen, he's back on the show. Mark Smith, thank you for that twenty dollars super chat. Let's go. Defense was superb. Go Niners. I agree. And I know that Draco is smoking on that Cowboys pack tonight. Hey gang, y'all gonna have to excuse me. I'm talking to my nigga right now. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have even said that. I'm high right now, but you're right, because I'm sucking on that cow bitch pack. Who the Cowboys fuck is a pack. cow bitch? Light it up. Oh, my mama, we finna put them in a burger. <laughs> we finna put them in a burger, put some cheese on it. Let's go, Draco. Um, put, a, put it in the shape of a star. <laughs> hey, look, great game. We on to the next round. We finna go fry another bird. I need an uh, eagle fried chicken pack next, nigga. Uh, I'm going to get off before I start talking too much. I'm already too hyped. Pluck Shout those feathers, Draco. We on to the next one. <laughs> Draco, with the you lively You got to blur call. me out on some of those. Hey, you're good, brother. You're good, brother. Appreciate the call. Let's go next to the legend, John Wallace. What's up, John? What's going on, everybody? There he is. How about them Niners? Oh, I didn't say Cowboy. I'm sorry, the Cowgirls. Hey, hey but... well, John, let's say it together. <laughs> How about <laughs> them <laughs> Cowboys? <laughs> Man, look, hey, this, this, look, to me, Chase and, and all the family, Trizzy, all y'all, look, 
this was a great game. And, and this is the kind of game we have to have. We got to play games like this. But the Eagles are going to come. They're going to bring it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Was Purdy to me scared? I don't think he was scared. I think there was just some plays he couldn't make. The yeah. defense was tough. These were two teams evenly matched in defenses, defense. except ours was just that much better. Yep. Pollard going out, I get what people are saying, but it wasn't like he was having a bust-out game. Yeah. It, it, it wasn't like that we were going to let him just get all out over loose on us. You know? Right. And and look, when, when, when Bosa, when one man is neutralized, that's why we got other players to step up. If you look at the totality – of yes, Bosa missing. Well, guess what? What did Armstead do? What did Epicon do? What did uh, Warner do? What What did all those other players do? They stepped up, and that's the point of a complete good total team. Yep. Yep. And look, John, like not every game is going to be an offensive slugfest in which you score thirty points. Like sometimes it's going to get ugly, and we knew going in. We talked about it all week. Niners, Cowboys, yeah. very Cowboys, evenly matched. And we saw that tonight, right. but the Niners were slightly the better team. And That's right. let's give credit to the Cowboys defense for just being a really good unit. Yeah, uh, one, one more thing, too, Chase. Check this out. Kyle was Kyle was scared tonight. On some, I'm not, I don't want to call him scared. Let me, let me rephrase conservative that. Conservative. Kyle needs to stop being safe. tentative. Yeah. Huh? He was conservative was because conservative. I think he's trying to keep Purdy safe against a pass rush that was annihilating yeah. the Niners offensive line. And they were, yeah. and they were, and that's what I'm trying to make. Like you just said, Chase, and for us that sometimes games are won in the trenches, in the mud, in the dirt, and you got to get beat up to beat up in order to win nine to six, 12 to 12 to nine, yeah. um, like it was tonight, 19 to 12. Yeah. And you know what? I think next week it won't be too much different because we're not going to let them throw on us like that. Yeah. We're not going to let them get down and feel like that. Philadelphia is not going to blow us out, and I don't believe we're going to lose the game. Yeah, Personally. I think it's going to be a really yeah, close game. I think it's going to be a yeah, really close and game. and I see us winning. Go Niner Nation! <laughs> John Wallace, what a legend, man. You never disappoint. Thanks for your support of the show, man. Oh, you got it, Chase. Love y'all, man. Right. God bless. Tom Daly, our next caller. What's up, Tom? Smoking on that. Uh, little pipe tonight, right? We saw Ben Cowgit, boy, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's nothing better than beating the the uh, the uh, the Cowboys. And I've been watching Niner games since like, shit. I was six years old, and I remember the '70s when they kept beating us, and we finally beat them. I think, all things aside, and I agree with John Wallace, this was a huge emotional win yep. for the Niners. To get past this, because you knew that Dallas was going to come out. They wanted to prove something. You know, it was going. You know, everybody was saying that Dallas wasn't a physical team on defense. They were very physical. This was a huge win for the Niners to get over to go into Philly and feel like you know, because that's going to be a whole different game. Um, and uh, I just think it was a huge win for them. Yeah. I, I agree with what everybody was saying um, ahead of me. Um, but just a huge emotional hurdle to get over. Yep. And to take down the Dallas Cowboys, how sweet is it? I mean, going into this game, the 49ers in their playoff history against Dallas, 3-5, and five, and the Cowboys had won a lot of those big games. But for San Francisco to now win three straight games over Dallas, this was a game that drew 41.5 million viewers last year. And we knew that with this matchup, it could maybe even draw more viewers. And I'm interested to see what the television numbers are going to be between two of these iconic brands. Look, we knew it was going to be close. We knew it was going to be a dog fight, a rock fight, a physical type of matchup. If Dallas met that level of physicality, they did. So credit to Dallas. But 49ers were just the better team tonight. And now they're advancing to the NFC Championship game. And Dallas, 27 years without advancing to the NFC title game. And San Francisco, third NFC Championship game over four years. What Kyle Shanahan's been able to do with this organization, him paired with John Lynch, it's extremely special. All right, now we have a special guest. It's our guy, Toby Willis, who sent us in the 49ers motorcycle helmet, which is a legendary gift to the channel. Toby, I want to start off with this, and then I'll allow you to explain and give your thoughts of the game. 
what is the origin and what is the story behind the Niners motorcycle helmet here? Are you there? I'm Can here. I'm here. I got you. All right, brother. I um, had a motorcycle like 10 years ago, and uh, I got that helmet. Okay. And uh, I was like, I started to buy another one. Well, I got a wife and kids now. And uh, Tina and Ava says, shout out, by the way. So shout I've had it you. around. And then next thing you know, I was like, man, I'm going to send this to the show because it's going to be a magical time. It will. So you can wear that been. all the way to the Super Bowl, my brother. Let's go. Let's go, man. I really yeah. do appreciate that. What are your thoughts on this game? Man, I have – I can't uh, – I was watching – I've been a 49er fan since 1980, and I've had to go through the lumps and uh, all the times where we had a battle. But 94 when Dion and the crew was there, that's the way I feel right now, and that's the way it's going to be, trust me. But getting on to the Eagles, I think we match up good with him. Purdy would be okay, man. He done good. It's like I realize he's just a rookie, man. So, but he don't look like one. So, but we'll be fine, man. Trust me, we'll be fine. So you going with so, the Niners man. next week? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we're gonna. It'll be a tough game, but oh yeah, yo, yeah, we'll win by probably about four. All right, I love so, it. So, but uh, man, I love the show. I love you guys, and that helmet looks rocking good with that shirt you got on. Looks so, awesome, man. All black, Niners, all business. Man. That's what it comes down to. I'm in black all pants, right, black man. shirt, black helmet, all black, all business. Amen, like my brother. Like Debo. That's the amen. Appreciate but you, how about them Cowboys? And, bro, keep doing what y'all doing. And, uh, man, go Niners. We love you guys. appreciate you lots, man. Much love to you as well. Let's go next to Edgar. Edgar Garcia, you're next up on our post game show. What's up, Edgar? Edgar, you there? If not, we'll move on. Storm and Norman, we've been showing all your super chats throughout the show as well. Edgar, I see you unmuted yourself. You ready to rock? Edgar, we can't hear you. Maybe go into your settings to unmute your microphone. All right, let's now go to Michael Keller. Michael Keller, you're next up on deck. What's up, Michael? Hey. Yo. What a win today. What a win. What a win. <laughs> I'm kind of concerned about something. All right. All right. Uh, can our defense match up with, with Philadelphia? That's the only thing I'm kind of concerned. I just don't want us being blown out. I think so. Look, this is a very good Cowboys offense that had come into this game with multiple occasions of scoring 30, 40 points. Like, they're really good. And the Cowboys only manufactured 12 points in this game. So, yes, the Niners' defense can keep up with Philadelphia, and they can stop Philadelphia. The only thing that really pissed me off in the second half was that, that fumble on the kick return. I'm like, uh, are you kidding? Yeah, that's how you lose games, honestly. You right. fuck around and, and I, you lose games like that. I was this close. I thought we were going to lose this game. I said, no. Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. Appreciate the call, man. Let's go next to Brian King, a.k.a. BK. From the Bay. What up, BK? Oh, did he drop out? BK from the Bay may have dropped out. Hop back into the caller queue. Uh, let's go to Jay Williams. Jay Williams, you ready to go? What's up? What's up? What's up? There he is. What's up, Jay? Man, I've been waiting forever to get in. I'm finally in, but I'm going to keep it short and just go bang, bang, Niners gang on the asses. <laughs> I love it, man. That's all you got? That's it? No, no. I, I, I mean, I've been waiting forever to get on. I finally oh. I spoke to you on Instagram about getting in, but yeah, man. I'm going to just go stick ahead. to the script, man. I think that Purdy was a little bit rattled. You know, I think he could have been a little bit more solid, but that defense of ours, man, I mean, I see us going, going far. I don't think anybody can really – mess with us right now i mean we've seen the two best defenses in the league a lot of talent was showcased today but i mean i'm riding high right now we're doing the damn thing I just, bang bang baby bang 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 that's it right there bang bang let's go you man. know it thanks for calling into the show astral no problem, man take care thank yeah, you yeah you as well you as well much love astral next up you gonna bring the heat as well let's go astral yo i do this was a game. It was a game, I, man. It was a game. Yeah, I honestly, I'm confident. I think we're, I think we're going all the way this year. We got, we got a lot to prove, especially if, especially if Kansas ends up winning next week. 
Mm, I really want that rematch, man. I yeah. really want it. Oh, Niners getting revenge on the Chiefs. That'd be great. Now, Please, I, be I've easy. said, and, and people try to call me crazy, but like my quarterback evaluation, I would rather have Joe Burrow than Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes. Burrow goes on the road. He beats Allen today. He's 3-0 and against Patrick Mahomes. And for Mahomes, he's a little bit banged up. I think the Bengals are in a good spot to make it back to the Super Bowl again. And I think the San Francisco matches up well against Cincinnati. Against I'm KC, more... they don't match up as well. But could Mahomes be limited a little bit with that ankle injury? I I honestly think Mahomes is going to struggle. I'm more scared of Burrow than I am Mahomes. I think yeah. that this Niners team can take either of them. The AFC doesn't have as well-routed defenses as the NFC does. We just probably went against the hardest defense we're going to go against. I don't think Philly is going to put up as much of a defensive fight as people are saying. Their pass is really good, offense. but they can be susceptible to the run. As Which well we are as very in heavy in. Exactly. Niners are great with the ground game. It's our secondary that's, if anything kills us, it's going to be our secondary. Yeah. Charvarius Ward and Diamador Lenore against Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown. That's a huge matchup. It's a huge matchup yeah. where Philadelphia might have the edge. But, again, if San Francisco can get that pass rush, that can change it. Rick Torres, my guy Rick. Good to hear from you again, Rick. There he is. Chase, 49ers, baby. Let's go. <laughs> Bye-bye, cowgirls. <laughs> we'll see you. F Dallas. Listen. Uh, you know, a couple things. This was a great win for them. I, I really think, you know, psychologically it was great for them. Uh, it was a defensive game. Even though Bosa was handled, the other guys stepped up. I mean, we got interceptions out of this. Uh, the other thing is people worried about the scoring. Listen, we can't score 30 every game. No, nah, it's just right? not sustainable. Yeah. And, and, and um, Purdy, you know, still was poised. He didn't let anything rattle him, and that's what I love about this kid. Um, and let's remember, the Eagles beat the Giants. Come on. Really? The Giants were lucky to even be in the playoffs. Yeah. Um, the conservative play calling I wasn't crazy about. I think that um, he should have done some um, screen plays to, to uh, negate the rush. Yeah. And yeah. I think that would have really helped us. But, you know, I'm very happy with the win. I'm confident going into Philadelphia. This that's going to be some battle, but I think we're going to come out on top. And and it would be great if we all our weapons were just firing at once, and they couldn't know how to stop us. Yeah, no, it's going to be a fantastic matchup between what I've continued to say, two best teams in the NFC. Thank you so much for that, Rick. Let's go next to Edgar. I think Edgar. Did we get to you, Edgar? You ready to go, Edgar? Edgar. Ready to go. There Second time. My guys, how's it going? And also, how about them Cowboys? How about them Cowboys? They got Dak, they got Zeke, they got Tony Pollard, Mika Parsons, all going to the Super Bowl, we'll buying Salute. tickets. <laughs> buying tickets, exactly. They're not going to be performing the big dance, which is what is such... An exciting moment to see and witness. Yep. Uh, a couple concerns about this game, outside of giving a few game balls in a little bit. Actually, I'll go with the game balls. Game balls to Dio for that interception. Jimmy for that interception as well uh, with the that play with the Warner. Warner. Yeah, yeah, the Fred Warner interception. That play was for Jimmy. A um, couple concerns regarding that game. I think this is a not constant theme. With today's post game show, it is the run game. The run game was uh, totally non existent. The secondary was being exposed. Um, actually, uh, what got us into the Super Bowl twenty in 2019 and almost back at it again in SoFi was that defensive front, was the rushing attack. Why are we not generating any pressure? We need to throw Jalen Hurts down the field if we need to see, if we want to see Brock Purdy play and be the first rookie to not only make it to the Super Bowl, but take it, uh, that Lombardi back home to Santa Clara. Right. That is the only concern Question that I have yeah. for, for this team. Other than that, Revenge Tour 3.0 continues. We're ready to take down those Eagles. It's going to be a fight. 
but generate that pass rush, uh, not have the linebackers um, carry that game too much and not have that whole game to Purdy uh, on his shoulders because we definitely did see the kid really, really uncomfortable tonight. Yeah. A little bit uncomfortable, but again, it's a byproduct of that Dallas defense coming to play. Like, they have a great defensive coordinator in Dan Quinn. They have a good pass rush. Their secondary was very good in this game. So, it doesn't surprise me that this Dallas defense came to play because they're a good defensive unit. Michael Keller, I'm not sure if we got to you, Michael, but if that's the case, unmute yourself, join the show. And then after that, we have Brian Eduardo and Wet Noodle 187 as our last three callers. What's up, Michael? I couldn't hear you the last time. I think All I good. unmute. Glad we got you. Yeah, I was con- I was not really concerned. I just was like, I know we could deal with Philadelphia. Yeah. And one of my coworkers told me last week, oh, we were going to lose. And then she touched my damn 49 drawing backpack. I'm going to tell her, what happened? You said we were going to lose. We won. You it's supposed to tell me I told you so, but you're going to get a whole full of that. <laughs> whole full of that. Yeah. Hey, Amen. We're set up. Very nicely for next week, and I cannot wait. All right. All right, Michael. Have a good one. Yeah, you as well. Let's go next to BK from the Bay. Now he's back on. What's up, BK? What's up, BK? What's up, Chase? Good to hear from you, man. Thanks for the super chats earlier. We appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Um, My concern was with the first half. I mean, they really gave me a scare. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I mean, that first half. You know, it was so physical, and it was really just a game that came down to okay, which teams is gonna, which team is going to make the mistake? And for Dallas, you know, Dak Prescott threw that early pick, and San Francisco didn't really turn the football over. But once they got past midfield, like that Dallas defense was not giving up anything to this Niners team. But again, credit Kyle Shanahan, D'Amico Ryan's. I thought they made some important adjustments there in that second half. Yeah, that they did. Um, my concern was with the turnovers, they never converted those into points. Yeah, you and have at, to. at crucial times they needed to. Yeah, especially against Philadelphia and BK. Thank you so much for the call, man. You continue to be a real one, and your super chats really go a long way in supporting what we do, as well as you just watching all of our shows. But against the Eagles, this is an Eagles team that put up 38 points against the Giants with Don Wink Martindale, right? Like he's one of the best defensive coordinators in the sport. So it's not going to be a field goal game against Philly. I don't believe you're going to have to convert on some of those touchdowns and get seven instead of three. Two callers left. Eduardo, then Wet Noodle 187. Eduardo Castilla. What's up, man? Eduardo, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? There he is. I got you. Alpha P900. Yo, what's up, man? My guy Chase is the first time I'm on the live stream glad you're here man well, i Good just to wanted hear from to say you. uh what's up bay area bread but i'm out here representing in mexico city okay nice 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 thanks for tuning in ran across your channel and i thought i'd join in on the chat because you know this season's hyping up to be a good one Aww. hope we well we hope you know it's the good one you know yeah uh, i hope so too any thoughts about this game or you just wanted to call in to Say what's up and show some love from Mexico. Well, City. yeah, I just wanted to share a couple pointers because honestly, the it's uh, another chapter to add to this uh, historic rivalry. You know, it was good to match up against uh, a divisional foe. You know, this whole week they've been you know chopping it up, acting all loud, you know, twerping and all that. But you know, at the end of the day, uh, you know, the game was played and. You know, it was ref- reflected on the team that was, I guess you could say, better prepared. You know, my only concern heading forward is uh, the play calling that uh, Shanahan has, uh, has uh, well, has at least applied in this game. Because I don't know if it's uh, a habit that he may have or something like that. But it seems that under the brightest lights, he uh, kind of shies away, you know, acts a little too reserved and you know, going into Eagles territory, going to going going over there to Link, you know, that's a tall task because the Eagles they're they're a complete team. You know, honestly, my prediction is that the winner of this next game is going to take the Super Bowl. To be honest, because you look across the the remaining teams teams left, and the two most complete are are the Eagles and the Niners. Theoretically speaking, you know, yeah. you know systematically speaking, and all that. But 
you know, I just, you know, that Achilles heel seems to be that play calling that Shanahan has in the biggest moments. I, I don't know how I feel about that, but apart from that, everything else looks good. Everything else is a green light. Eduardo, go. fantastic call. And for this Niners team, you know, going up against the Eagles, Kyle Shanahan can't afford to be complacent because Nick Sirianni is so aggressive with his play calling and his decisions with Philadelphia. And that's why I've continued to say that, like, getting seven instead of three is going to be huge in this football game. And it could come down to two young coaches in the NFL and Shanahan, Nick Sirianni, making that big decision. You go for it on a, third and sh uh, on a fourth and short when you're on the opposition's territory. What kind of decision goes back and forth there in the mental game between Sirianni and Kyle Shanahan? Because Shanahan can, can, can get conservative from, from time to time. There's no doubt about that with his offensive play calling, which we saw tonight, but also his decisions as to whether or not to go for it on some of the short yardage situations. Whereas Nick Sirianni, he's full go all the time, living up to that Philadelphia mentality of, Let's put our nuts on the table and let's ride. I do think that that last drive for San Francisco to get those extra three, really, really critical in this football game. But the nuances of this game are going to be very, very important. All right, a couple callers left. We'll go Wet Noodle and then Kevin. Then we're wrapping it up. Wet Noodle, tune in from Seahawks territory. F the Seahawks, F Dallas as well. <laughs> What's up, Chase? How's it going, man? Uh, even better that you're here, man. Oh, thank you. I don't know if you can hear me well. My voice is gone. I got but, you, bro. Um, two things. The first one, two for two on my bets this week. So good go. on that. Get that money. Oh, heck yeah. Um, Everybody says that we need to turn around pressure more. I think we need to spy more, though. I think we need to spy. Against and Hurts, then, you will need to, yeah. You got to spy and play, play the run because the Eagles have a killer running game. So I'm thinking maybe spy a little bit and then have Boza and then put the pressure on and make sure you go, you know? Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, a spy against Jalen Hurts is going to be really critical in this game, Wet Noodle, and hope you and the family are doing well. We'll send you uh, that koozie here coming up here uh, once things die down a little bit here at Chat Sports as you are the winner of a raffle, but uh, for just being a real one. But, yeah, a spy on Jalen Hurts is going to be really important. I mean, he had some design runs against the Giants. He had one rushing touchdown last night on Saturday. Uh, but if you don't spy him and you get that pass rush home, those are the deflating plays that we saw a time or two from Dak Prescott in which you did everything well. He dropped back. You couldn't find anywhere to go. The pass rush got home. Then he splits the gap there. And because you sent home some pressure or a blitz, there's no linebackers left. He picks up a first down to move the chains. And that really is backbreaking. So a spy on Hurts is going to be big. And that's why Fred Warner, Aziz Alshire, as well as Jerry Greenlaw, going to have to come to play. Do have some injury news on Christian McCaffrey, by the way, that's just coming in. McCaffrey said after the game he was fighting through discomfort with his calf. He said he'd be okay. This is a Niners team that's completely different with Christian McCaffrey on this offense and 100% healthy. So that's going to be a big element of this game. Let's round out with Kevin. Kevin Romero, last caller here on Colin. What's up, Kev? What's up, man? Can you hear me? Of course. Loud and clear. Oh, man, it, it was a crazy game, man. I, that had me on my feet. Like, like I was All calling us, my man. dad. And, <laughs> All of us. I know. Yeah, I just wanted to say, though, like, I've been watching you since 2019. And, you know, like, I really like what you what you do. And, Thanks, bro. You know, it brings a lot. So I appreciate uh, it, man. This we're is my here, first to, we're time. here to provide the faithful worldwide. Oh, yeah, definitely. And it's my first time calling in, so it's like it's crazy. I don't know. Like I have like, like oh, it's like jitters, you know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no jitters here, man. We're just talking ball. We're talking Niners. That's it. Oh yeah, and uh, one one of the things that I just want to say is like I feel like you know the the running our running game is like kind of having a little trouble, but I feel like if we can put maybe like Jordan Mason or Ty Davis Price in there. Like to kind of like mix it up because you know every every running back is different, so you know that could maybe put us into a better situation. Yeah, Kev, thanks for your call. Thanks for calling in uh, for the first time, man. So good to hear from you, and you executed flawlessly with your delivery there. So no need to be nervous. Uh, with the Niners in that backfield, it looks to be a two running back rotation right now. It's McCaffrey, it's Elijah Mitchell, it's nobody else. 
I don't think that Shanahan trusts two rookies in Jordan Mason and Ty Davis Price. And Elijah Mitchell is basically that short yardage physical back. But now that Debo Samuel is back, they're using him now as a running back. So that's basically your three running back rotation. It's Debo, it's Elijah Mitchell, it's Christian McCaffrey. I don't think that's going to change. Short yardage type of stuff, I can see why you might want to bring in Mason. I think he has a future on this football team, but Shanahan right now, he's running with a lot of the vets and a lot of the experienced players. That does it for our post-game show on Colin. We're still live on YouTube, though. So we'll catch you there, but to all of you who sent in a call who continue to support everything that we're doing. We do appreciate that. We're ending our call-in room. Staying live on YouTube. We'll catch you on that side.